So I was recently reading a book by Jonathan Dancy called Ethics Without Principles, and uh, it's value, it's advocating an idea called moral particularism, which is this idea that, um, uh, first of all, it has a kind of value holes in it, that any moral situation uh, is not reducible to a set of universal, universal principles. Um, that there is uh, within any moral situation reasons for an action, reasons against, reasons against action, as well as you know they're we call you know disablers, uh, enablers, and disablers, which it, which enable you to do an action or disable the uh, the action or or give you a reason or disable the reason for doing it. Uh, there's also like accelerators and decelerators, which are things that. Uh, yeah, if, if an accelerator is absent, you might still have reason to do it, but you wouldn't have as much reason to do it. Uh, like, say, if um, if someone is in need of help and no one else is around uh, to help them. Now, that's an accelerator. It gives you more reason to do something that you would still have reason to do if it wasn't there. Enabler and disabler sort of is like an on and off switch. So, um, like, in yeah, the famous Kantian example of the other you know you should never lie but then there's a murderer at your door trying to find uh someone who's hiding up in your attic and they ask you if they're there you know so you have a reason so you should always tell the truth but unless there's you know a murderer trying to catch someone so, so that's the disabler to uh to the action and so the idea is that any moral situation has that ki- that kind of package of things that are in addition to the reasons themselves, and like enablers, disablers, accelerators, decelerators are not just um, like they're not necessarily reasons in themselves. They modify the reasons that you have for a situ- uh, for a particular action, um, and so these all come together. But but there's more to it than that because because other philosophers have talked about uh, the idea of pr- prima facie uh, reasons and uh, prima facie reasons that that um, are uh, you know things that contribute to the overall goodness or badness of the situation. But he's arguing something strong in that he's saying that you know not only uh, do um, given reasons have value unto themselves, um, but uh, the whole of a situation uh, changes the value of the parts. So um, this is in contradiction to the uh, to G. E. Moore's version of value holes, and where you know, he, he talks about you know. Uh, a whole being um, you know, an organic unity that that is either more or less than the sum of its parts, but more is still assuming that the that the parts retain their value. And uh, what uh, moral particularism is saying is that, that no, it's not that the whole is greater or less than the sum of its parts. It's saying this, uh, the the whole actually affects the value of the parts, and even reverses them. So some, sometimes a reason for an action in one case can be a reason against an action in another case. So um, he uses a lot more examples than I can think of at the moment. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to give like a concrete example of all this stuff, but, um, but yeah, it's basically saying, I mean, in, in a sense, um, it's like the way we think of reasons other than the more reasons doesn't, don't necessarily follow any principles. Uh, you know, and when we judge aesthetics, um, then uh, the, we, we judge things by comparison. And that's kind of what he's saying with uh, morality is that uh, we, it, it, it's the kind of moral realism. It's, it's saying that, you know, that moral statements do pick out real things in the world, um, but that um, they're not reducible to any set of principles and that principles are the wrong way of thinking about morality. We might have general rules of thumb and some of even might even, you know, be true in all cases, uh, such as, for example, you know, the idea that uh, you should never do rape apologies. <coughs> Thunderfoot. Um, um, but um, but yeah, the the, the idea is that um, you should always have uh, that that uh, for for any uh, moral situation, uh, there's always a kind of variance that uh, and, and uniqueness to that uh, for that situation, and that uh, we should argue um, we can argue morality coherently. By instead of uh, appealing to some universal principles, I said um, by analogy to other situations, because each situation will be like other situations in in some sense and unlike that in other senses. So you can always appeal to the particulars of the moral of the situation to arrive at the morality without having to have some set of a set of uh, principles that uh, that can calculate uh, the the you know the morality ahead of time. Um, so it, what he's basically kind of doing is uh, giving like a Wittgensteinian 
language analysis to morality. You know, Wittgenstein, you know, sort of analyzed language and meaning in a way that, uh, uh, you, know, you know, the meaning of a word is not necessarily a kind of a dictionary definition, but, you know, a, uh, a family resemblance how, of how you deploy it. And that's what he's saying about ethical principles here is that, yeah, is that, you know, there's, instead of ethical principles, we have, we have rules of thumb that, um, uh, that are that are based on you know the similarity of different si- of various situations, and we can always um, and the rules of thumb are based are not uh, you know prior to the situations, but they're rarely, but they're generalizations of uh, the kind of uh, moral features of uh, many kinds of situations we encounter. So, in other words, you know, what we call principles are abstractions from the um, real um, uh, par- particular moral situations that arise. So I guess that's it for now.